Hi, everyone. Michael Asifo here. And my guest at this time is now newly ranked UFC strawweight Tabitha Baby Shark Ricci. How are you today? Hi, I'm awesome. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Awesome. awesome. Thanks for thanks for coming on today and uh spending some time with us. Uh so first question I gotta ask, just out of the blue, out of nowhere. Um <laughs> the nickname Baby Shark. <laughs> I, I gotta ask about that. Is, is that from uh that TV show or that song? Or uh, no, but but uh but yes, nobody has, but <laughs> yeah. <laughs> My uh, a friend of mine, he's teaching at my jiu-jitsu gym, and uh, all the time when I show up for training, he call me the baby sharks in the house. Uh, I'm the smallest girl in the gym, the gym at the gym, and I'm rolling all the guys, the small guys, the big guys. So he he comes baby shark. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> and, no, I I get it though because when you know when we watch you fight, and I I was watching you from LFA onward, so you know very yeah. extensive career. You know you do kind of have that aggressive shark like style, and it kind of yeah. seems to, um, almost like there's blood in the water. Like you kind of smell that blood in the water, and you you pounce you you pounce on these girls more and more as the fight goes on. So um, that's kind of interesting to see. Um, I got to ask, is that kind of a thing that developed over time in your fights or was that just from day one? All you knew was go forward and, and just be aggressive as much as possible. Uh, yeah, I think like this is already was uh, always was my, uh, my style, my fight style, you know, bringing people to the deep water and try to submit. I think it's most of you can see on my fight, uh, but actually, I'm getting way better on my game, and I'm still like just getting better on on my on my on my grappling game. Mm. Yeah, um, and we'll we'll get to like the the really impressive when you had um that last week uh, over Jessica Penne. Um, but I kind of want to set the stage a little bit because you know you did mention you know you've been working kind of like on that other aspect of your grappling game. Um, and one of the things I've noticed about kind of your fighting style is that you are well-rounded. You are well-decorated. You know, you've been doing judo since you were a little girl. Mm -hmm. um, you've done Muay Thai. And you've also yeah. done Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Uh, so how important for you, in your opinion, is it to be a well-rounded fighter? I think in the mix mixed martial arts, it's very important in, you know, be well-rounded in all the martial arts. Because, you know, in, at UFC, everybody's good. That's not easy fights, you know. Mm -hmm. So you got it. So my goal is try to master the whole martial arts. You know, it takes time and it takes a lot of experience. So uh, I'm still in process, but I'm... Um, but I'm I'm getting there, you know. I had I still have a lot to learn, but I'm uh, very happy where my game at right now, and I'm just so that I'm only getting better now. I see, I see. Okay. okay, so let's talk about the fight. You know, this is it was a big fight. Um, you get the call to face Jessica Penne. Um, you know, a uh, highly credentialed black belt in her own right, former Invicta champion, former title challenger. Um. And they say, hey, you're going to, you are you have, to, well, not you have to, but hey, do you want to fight her? Uh, what was going through your mind uh, when you got that call? Well, I know that, I'm, no, I know Jessica for a long time. I also follow her in the social media for a long time because she started a division. She she was the OG for the division. She, she fought for the belt. Everybody knows her, you know. So I, I feel like, oh, I really like the fight because it's a big challenge for me. You know, I'm actually going to test, my, test myself too. Uh, she's, she have amazing jiu-jitsu, you know. Uh, she's black belt maybe for a long, long time. So uh, I talked to my coach. We watch, we watch her fight and say like, oh, I think, I think we can do that, you know. And um, I think it... The, I think I just followed the the game plan, you know, and everything worked perfectly the way me and my team talk about it. It is a big accomplishment to really uh, to beat her is one thing, but to also submit her as well, you know, um, yeah. she's really high level when it comes to her grappling. So was is that something that just kind of like was like a bonus for you or you didn't care how you got the win? 
Oh, that was a bonus for me because I didn't care how I was going to win the fight, you know. In my mind, just like be aggressive, go for it, don't stop, speed, you know, and she cannot keep up with the, with me, you know. Like mm -hmm. that was my mentality. And then like if I didn't stop the fight in the ground, I was going to stop the fight on my feet because I was not going to stop, you know. I work a lot on my on my uh, on my cardio, my pace, my my game plan was like really like overwhelmed her, you know, with the speed and uh, intensity. And uh, I was just executing the game plan, you know, and I, I know that I was going to, I want to finish the fight standing up or, or in the ground. So I, she just gave it to me and uh, I just took and actually I didn't even know how I did the umbar when I finished the fight. I have to go back and look at it. You know, people was asking me, how was the transition? How you did that? You know, it, <laughs> it's something that I do I like automatic, you know, like it's, it's something that's on you. And like when you practice a lot that you, it just flow to, you know, like it, you, I just don't think it just there. I just go by feeling. Yeah. Nice. You know what? If I can nerd out for a second, because I am a bit of a jujitsu nerd, um, that far side armbar was really nice. And I was kind of watching back to see um like if if that's something that's just kind of your game. Cause I noticed you have like all your submission wins are by armbar, and it is that particular setup. Is that um from your judo background? I knew I know they really love that far side judo yeah. kadami. So is that kind of like where it came from? Uh, I oh I do love umbars this the submission you know that's one of my favorite uh submissions in jiu-jitsu umbars and uh, uh dars is an arm triangles choke that's one of my favorite subs um it comes from a little bit from judo but I do practice that a lot in jiu-jitsu yeah mm -hmm. that's that's more of my uh, one of my jiu-jitsu games yeah nice I see so you know now that makes it for you um I believe that would be the, your third uh, three fight winning streak or four fight winning streak um so you know now that means it's gonna be a you're gonna be fighting in as a ranked fighter as well um yeah. so for you where do you see where do you see kind of your next couple of fights going are you looking to um kind of take take a crack at like the top five maybe look at some of the fights in the top 10 like is there any fights that you and your team have on the horizon that you're looking to um so i'm not on the rush you know i still um want to get more experience and experience it as i i can you know in the inside of the octagon and the ufc so we don't have we don't have a name we don't look in like for a specific girl that we want to fight but i do want to try to get in the top 10 Mm -hmm. uh this year so i have to talk to my manager you know i haven't seen him yet uh we have to have a meeting to talk more about that more specific and then we're gonna decide exactly what we're gonna do you know uh i truly i truly believe in my team and my managing and you know i think that we're gonna get the the right fight for me so i i just gonna be ready for it i see that's well i think that's a good way to look at it uh you know not yeah. really rush look at yeah. some some good fights um you know in a very measured approach um you yeah. know cuz i which is you know a very very good um i guess the word i would say is it's a very good tactical like approach thinking like a general out there um yeah. you know and i guess that kind of transitions me into kind of like your career as a whole um cuz there was there was one particular fight i remember where you um you got the call into UFC on about a week's notice. I, I think I remember this fight, and you really made a good account of yourself. Um what when you get that when you get that Manon against Manon? Yeah, that that was her. That was, that was like three days notice. <laughs> wow. That was crazy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, which is I think honestly, um, you know, to take a fight on three days notice, um, you know, for someone on the outside looking in, um, can you explain that process of like you're in like another organization and uh, the UFC calls like who calls? Um, what did they ask? How did how'd you go about it? What was going through your mind? You know? Well, so my manager called my uh, my coach, my jiu-jitsu coach, Frangina, and he was working, and then he called me. He said, oh, can you stop by and he talk to you? 
And then when I show up to his work, he told me like, oh, I have big news. What's we'll he uh, just call just call asking for you? I said, well, uh, that's awesome. I was very excited, you know, like mm. giving him a big hug, start to crying. But he's like, yeah, but this is going to have to be in the, the way the vision of somebody, somebody pull out. And I say, it doesn't matter. I just want to get in the UFC. It doesn't matter who, what division, you know, like I want to go in. He say like, and he say, okay, it's going to be a tough fight. You know, the girl is like almost a top rank number one, you know, she's, you know, every, she's going to be a UFC star. It's like, yeah, it's okay. The, it doesn't matter. I want to I wanna get in. I want to fight. My goal is to be in the UFC. And then that's what I do every day of my life. You know, that's my lifestyle. I, you know, let's, I train every day. And, like, doesn't matter. My my dream is to be in the UFC. So I'm going to get any opportunity it gets for me. You know? Doesn't matter who it is. That's what... That's what I was thinking the whole time on my on my career, you know. So I just need one opportunity to get in. Doesn't matter the result, and then we got it. Yeah. Well, of course I got the loss. That was very sad for me, you know. But I was already expecting that, you know, winning or losing because I did add any camp prepare specific for her. Mm -hmm. I was training, but not for her, you know. But it's is how much short it is. So. Yeah, I completely get it. And, and I remember it was like, it was a really good fight though for you. And and I think that it's the reason why I think, um, in my opinion, I don't know, just from the outside looking in, is the reason why, um, you know, you, you've had kind of uh, a little bit of a career following. You know, there's been people um, like the, the Instagram has blown up a little bit for you, I've, I've seen, and people really like the way you fight. Um, yeah. And, you know, I guess my question would be like, kind of, you know, and kind of going from like, you know, maybe like a burgeoning MMA fighter, not really many people besides like your friends, maybe, or like a couple of people on the inside knowing about you to now having like a bit of a following. Can that be a little tough sometimes? Or it, like, do you just kind of block out the noise? Oh, I do have like small circles, you know, uh, I'm not like, um, uh open my life for a lot of people. So I do have my family, teammates, some friends here around me. And uh, that does annoy me because the people around me, they always push me forward, you know. They're very positive and, like, they help me, like, from any aspects, life and techniques, and I'm open to listen to everyone. So uh, actually they believe in more of my dream than I believe, you know, like they really push me forward. They like, they're always there for me. Yeah. I'm living here by myself in the U S my whole family lives in Brazil. So my teammates, they are my family. So, uh, you know, they, they know exactly the time when they, they make the noise for me and the time that's like time to work, you know, like, and they are there for me to like, to be a dummy for me to fall. How many times they can fall on the ground to be tap out, to get punched in the face, to be up on the face. Like they're always there for me. So, um, they, they don't annoy me, you know, uh, and also I have a, like a team that help him in a social media too. So I'm not the type of person that I'm on all the social media 24 seven, you know? Mm -hmm. So I, um, I have a very good control of that. Yeah. And I think that's one thing that people don't realize is like to, um, you know, it is an individual sport, but it, it's, it's a team sport in a way because you need a team to become better. Yeah. For sure, yeah, we cannot win alone. And if you do, if you win alone, that's not fun, you know. We have to to have a, like the crew behind you, the arm behind you. So it's 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 make a reason to win. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh, we're almost out of time, but before you go, I do want to um, let I do want people kind of to know about your journey and your story. So where can people um, kind of follow you or you know? see you um in terms of like your social media or any kind of projects going on soon um i guess yeah so i guess the the question would be where can people uh find you well uh more active on the instagram so you guys can follow me at tabitha.richie and i also uh you guys can uh, follow me on my website tabitha uh i have some blog there that i write down a little bit about the fights upcoming fights i have some merch there 
Um, so you guys can follow both of those. Awesome. You heard it here. You know, go go buy some Tabitha Ricci merch. Okay, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Thank you for doing this again. Really appreciate you coming of on. Of course. Thank you for having me. And I'm sorry to be late. <laughs> <laughs> it's all good.